Welcome to another installation of the Redfish YouTube channel educational series. My name is Jeff Hillen. I work for Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and I will be going over the Redfish model for chassis. As a quick refresh, chassis is one of the collections off of the root service. Um, the individual resources within it are associated with systems, managers, and even chassis themselves. And we'll show you that here in just a second. Um, I'm back at the mock-ups, and if you look at the mock-up, there are two of them I'm going to go over. One is a simple rack-mounted server, and I'm going to use that for most of it. But there are some things about chassis that the bladed mock-up helps go over, and so I'll, I'll go over that as well. So looking at the simple rack-mounted server, I'm in the chassis collection, and there's a 1U chassis. Um, there's only going to be one chassis in a simple server because there's a one-to-one -one relationship there. So I can go in and take a look at that chassis. Again, it's got the OData type, ID, name, and as I talked about, there's chassis type, system type, um, manager type, so here the chassis type is rack mount. So this is a rack mounted system with an asset tag, manufacturer model SKU, serial number, part number, and power state. Indicator LED is lit on this one, so you turned it on. Um, its status is enabled, it's okay, and it's got power and thermal properties associated with it, as well as links to the computer systems in this chassis, the managers that manage it, and in fact there is a manager in this chassis, and it's the same one that manages uh, this chassis. The bladed system I'm going to go to has a different chassis collection. In it, I've got every single chassis, apparently there's a multi-bladed enclosure, and several blades that are inside of this uh, chassis. So I want to jump into them real quick and show you just how different it is. I'm going to jump into the multi-bladed enclosure. And you'll notice it's got the same common properties. Of course, the chassis type is enclosure on this one. It's got power and thermal, but it's also got contains um, links in here because it contains multiple blades. So this particular um, chassis um, has blade one, blade two, blade three, and blade four in it. And if I go into one of the blades individually, apparently it has thermal sensors associated with it. And again, I'm in a blade, and it's got a contained by enclosure in it. So it actually, multi-bladed enclosure is the container for this blade. So I can figure out, no matter what resource I'm at, what is the system that I'm associated with, if any, what is the managed manager for it, and am I contained by something? And notice it's also um, cooled by an individual fan, so you can have that, and powered by an individual powered supply. So you'll, you'll find either an OData reference, or in this case, it's a JSON pointer uh, format. Um, and you can just tell that, because if there's a pound sign in it, it's JSON pointer. If there's not, it's an OData pointer. Um, so let's take a look back at the simple enclosure um, at the um, power and thermal characteristics. So looking at thermal, I have this huge array in here called temperatures. And again, it's of type thermal 102, ID is thermal, name is thermal. Uh, each one of these individual instances tells you the OData ID for this. In other words, this is temperatures array index zero, therefore it's member zero. Um, this is CPU one temp. Um, sensor number five for those keeping, trying to do IPMI convergence. There's reading in Celsius, upper thresholds, minimum range, maximum range, and there's a thing called related item. So if the implementation knows the individual item associated with this particular sensor, it can have it here. And this particular one is associated with CPU1. There's more temperature sensors in here. There's one for CPU2, and there's one for um, the chassis. And I'm going to ignore them right now because there's another array that's important, and that one's called fans. And here, it's just like the temperatures array, only slightly different. It's got a name, physical context. This one is a backplane, but a program could never figure out that it's actually the backplane fan. And that's why we have the um, related item in there. So this is fan zero. It's got its current reading. It's reading in units is RPM. Lower threshold is zero. Max range is 5,000. So 2,100, it's running about medium. Um, it's a redundant fan. So. Um, it's got redundancy object zero. It tells you what other fans are associated with this one. And this one is related to um, system, um, this particular system ID. Um, here's another fan, and it's running a little bit slower, and it's uh, also in a redundancy set. 
um, and its related item is the same system. And here's my redundancy set down here, which is the third collection. I look for redundancy zero in it, and I find my redundancy set is fans zero and one. And of course, there's a status associated with it, as well as a mode that shows my redundancy mode. This one is an N plus M, so I need one plus one, so I really only need one. It's not running, you know, where both of them are going at the same time or, or anything like that. You'll see the redundancy object is used for other items as well. Therefore, it's a more generic object that is applied to um, other um, parts of other models. Um, and you can find out from those, from the individual models, what they're related to. Looking at power, um, here we have a uh, object power. Um, again, this was off of the system, um, just like every other array. This has an OData ID. This one's power control zero. What is it? It's the server power control. Um, my metrics consumed in watts, available watts is zero. Capacity is 800. I'm only at 344 right now. Um, this one is power limited, so it's power limited to 500. And the exception is really just so tells it to log the event. It's related to this particular system. That's its power cap. And um, the status of this power cap is OK. We've also got the voltages array in here that tells us I've got uh, voltages is 0. Um, it's a VRM associated with a CPU. And you'll find that down here. It's in this particular system because that's as close as I could get. I couldn't figure out, is this voltage regulator really associated with a CP CPU or just a system? Apparently, this one is associated with just a system. And there's another VRM for this system as well. Moving down, there's also a power supply array. And this one has a power supply zero. It's the power supply bay. It's just what the name the implementer has decided to associate with it. Um, the power supply type is AC. Line input is AC wide. It's a 120. It's got a power capacity of 800. Input type is AC. Input type is AC. There's two ranges here for it. It's got a related item of the chassis because this particular power supply is the only power supply for this chassis. So that's a brief introduction to the chassis model, much more simple than the systems model by far. Again, the important things here being contained and contained by. Um, with that, that ends this particular session on Redfish. I hope you've learned uh, quite a bit, and thank you for watching. And please stay tuned to the rest of the sessions in the Redfish channel. For more information, see the Developer Hub or the Standards page. Thank you.